That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Respect Preservation Moving Forward edition of the Always Irish Still on Vacation show. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Really appreciate it. It's good to be back. Was doing um, Disney and SeaWorld for a few days and all that, and there's no time to record in the middle of all that. What an experience that is. Haven't been there since I was in, like, second grade. Wow. Um, so now I got some time and a, and a couple of things I want to get out and, and make sure that we're on the same page with. So thanks for being here. Obviously, if you haven't yet, you can subscribe on YouTube. Give the video a thumbs up. That ups me as well. Notifications on that way. You'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. You don't want to miss it. Twitter, search bar, always Irish or at always Irish Inc. Emails, always Irish ND at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want me. You can get me. Call in line when I get back to Illinois. We're going to do a, a multiple call in shows. Like, I have not been available to interact with you guys the normal way, let you have your opinion on how everything's unfolded, react to some of the stuff I've said and wrote and all that. So, we're going to do that as soon as I get back in a couple of days um, so we can get back on track with you guys having your say. And I, I want to get back into that. Um, and there's people that agree with me on stuff. There's people that don't. We need to hash that all out. And we just haven't had a chance to do so uh, yet. Fighting Irish Wire, make it a part of your Google Notre Dame routine every day. All right. So number one is you guys are doing great with the LSU family situation. Uh, a family at the bar we were at yesterday behind us all decked out in LSU purple. You know me. I got to say something. Uh, not rude or anything, just on the way out, I just stopped by and said, like, I didn't could just pull up a chair and join their family for lunch. On the way out, walking by, I just stopped and said, I had my Notre Dame stuff on. I said, obviously, you could tell I'm a Notre Dame guy. I'm just wondering what you think of Kelly so far. Uh, and I was genuinely cu curious. I know zero LSU fans in real life. None. Zero. I'm from the Chicago area. I don't know one person that that loves LSU. So I was genuinely interested. I, they looked horrified that somebody would stop and engage. Uh, the women were shielding the children. I, I was getting the stink eye from, from the people. I don't understand. I was not rude. I was super pleasant. I just, on the way out, stopped by and real quick said, I, I want to know what you think of Kelly as a Notre Dame they were horrified. I scared them. Like I was getting weird looks like, who is this creep? You don't go out eight or 10 deep wearing purple LSU stuff, every single one, even the kids. And then act surprised when somebody asks you about LSU. I, I don't understand why I got the reaction I did. They all acted horrified. Like I was uh, trying to rob their table or something. You don't roll out in public making that public of a statement and not expect people to engage. You don't get to do that. You don't get to walk around in Florida making this statement, just like I make my Notre Dame statement publicly. You are inviting conversation. You're inviting dialogue. So I don't understand how they acted like they couldn't believe I approached them. You made a public statement with eight adults and two kids. And I engage you on it. And they acted horrified and just totally wigged out that somebody would ask them something. I don't understand, but it was weird. And I don't think I did anything wrong. Um, so, but you guys are having fun with that on Twitter. So you guys are doing great. Uh, here's my thing on Disney. Since I just did that, I got to give, here's my one thing I'm going to say. Traffic lines, waiting, crowd, slow, slow people, old people, other people's kids, lines, waiting, everything's overpriced. Like all that stuff is what it is. You know what you're going to get at Disney. I'm going to give them credit for this. For as many people as they have coming and going everywhere in every direction at every minute, the transportation in and out of those, those places is about as good as it could be. The parking area, the toll booth, and then you got to park. And then you're on a little tram in the parking lot that brings you to either a monorail or to a boat that then brings you where you need to go. And then you got to do that all to get back. It all went about as quick as it could go for as many people as they had. I'm going to give them total credit on that. Not, a, not an easy thing to do moving that many people. Um, but my word, is that a full day? I mean, prepare yourself physically, emotionally, 
financially prepare because it's a long day, man. But we, we had a good time. So let's get into this. Let's move some of our recent discussions forward here. And there's two points to this. One is practical on the field. Like what we're going to get with play, play, play calling. What, what Parker wants to run different than what Tommy was running all that. Like practically what this is going to look like. And then there's the big big picture stuff of process and, and, and the perception of how Notre Dame handled their recent hires and the national way we're looked at and talked about and all that. There's two different tracks there at the at the same time. Right now, I want to talk about just preventing the situation we just went through from happening again. And just go over a couple ways I think Notre Dame could tighten this up. Um, I don't think I should have to do this episode. But apparently, Notre Dame needs the lesson. Like, I should not have to go over some of this stuff. But, but I feel like it'd help because apparently... They need it. So let me get into this, and, and I'll make it quick. Number one, Notre Dame needs a full internal review of all the processes that went into the offensive hire situation, hiring and situation. A full audit is warranted and needed at this, this point. Maybe that's already happening. Maybe that's already all already happened. I don't care what Jack and the university and Marcus or any of them said last week in their press conferences or anything. I don't care what anybody said. There were mistakes made. Like they're trying to tell you this, this wasn't that it internally, they know mistakes were made. They're not going to tell us because they can't tell us because it's admitting the process was flawed. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. But in no way am I believing them when they say, oh, this all went exactly how we wanted. No, no way. So maybe all this is going on already behind the scenes and we don't know. That's fine. I don't need to know. But I need to know that they're they're working on whatever this process was needs to be tightened up, retooled, something. So I need that to be happening, even if it's behind the scenes. I don't need to know about it, but it needs to be happening. Um, number two. A review of the communication protocols on everything is in order here. Who communicates to who, when, about what, 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 what can they not say right away? How publicly are these communications? How publicly does Notre Dame want these communications to be known when you're maybe looking at a prospective hire uh, that may excite fans or, or make fans mad or whatever? Like the communication there needs to be tight. Who says what to who and when and how public is it? That this, this, this got messed up the last couple of weeks. Something wasn't right with the way that all happened. I need that to be looked at. Again, it's basic PR. It's basic PR, but Notre Dame apparently needs the lesson because they didn't handle it well. You need these checks and balances with your communication scale. So that you don't end up in a in a bad dynamic like we have uh, the last couple of weeks. So the communication needs to be looked at. Who and when and what are they saying and not saying? How public do we want it to be? All of that needs to be carefully considered and obviously wasn't recently. Um, I don't care what Marcus says about, oh, we bring a recruit to the basketball game and nobody would think anything of it. Why is the hockey game any different? I'll tell you why it's different. I'll tell you why it's different. Because there's only one offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, but there's 50 offensive players on the team. Like, that's why a coach isn't a player. It's a bigger deal. A player's one piece of 50 guys that play on the offense or whatever. The coach is a bigger deal. I know Marcus understands that. And he was in a box and had to say what he had to say. But there's fewer coaches than players. So it's a bigger deal when something happens with the coaches. They're in a bit bigger position of power. They can control more. So I know Marcus understands it's different when you're courting a coach than a player for those reasons. Um, so publicly. So that's a very obvious difference. And I know Marcus knows that even though he said, oh, you wouldn't think about bringing a recruit. Recruits or players are different. They're different. 
There's more players. It's not looked at the same. One individual player you're recruiting doesn't change how the whole offense looks and runs for the near future. There's a big difference. And I know Notre Dame gets that, but they had to backtrack and step on all this. Super frustrating. So get your communication right and have some checks and balances here. Number three, this is so lame. Just basic timing. Step one in this process needs to be figured out. Whatever step one is to know to trigger step two and then step three. This is so basic, but Notre Dame messed it up. Somewhere in here with the last couple of weeks, this all got messed up of figuring out one thing before you move to the next. It needs to be tightened up. This is basic stuff. Notre Dame's. Here's what bothers me. Notre Dame is so good with this stuff, with everything else surrounding the university. And then with the one part I care about the most, they drop the ball. It pisses me off. You're good about all this with your messaging, with with social issues or with changes at the university or how to handle stuff going on. You're so careful and good with messaging and timing with everything else. And then you drop the ball on football. Not cool. If you're going to have that tight of an operation, it needs to be everything. Okay, so whatever it is, you can laugh and be like, John, this is so remedial. Yeah, it is, because apparently Notre Dame needs the lesson. Finishing, figuring out all the steps to step one and get them done before step two and then three. I'm just looking at preventing the perceptual nightmare we've been existing in the last couple of weeks, guys. All right, on a, on a perceptual way. So the timing needs to be looked at. Here's number four. Again, maybe this is happening. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. If it's not, I need it to. I need Jack. I need Marcus. And I need that board who signs off on the checks. I need them to meet more often than they do. Maybe they never meet. Maybe they meet all the time. I don't know what they talk about when they meet. I'm not talking about representatives from each party. I need those people to get in a room more often and try and get on the same page because they're obviously not. I don't care what any of the story was that came out last week. Everybody wasn't on the same page here. That's a problem. And one thing I've learned about Notre Dame's history is once you start having cracks in the foundation between the coach, the athletic director, and the board, that's a bad start to a relationship. It's a bad when they're not all pulling or it doesn't appear they're all pulling from the same end of the rope. That's a bad dynamic you're starting with, with the coach and the administration and the AD. So I need them to all get on more of the same page because I don't know exactly how or exactly what, but something went wrong in everybody understanding everybody's part in this and how to do things and what, what was possible here. So I need those groups to all get on the same page. It's a huge red flag in a Notre Dame coach's tenure when you start hearing him and the AD, him and the administration, not on the same page. And maybe you could say, John, I didn't hear that here. I just heard it from you, but not from them. What part are you guys not getting? Notre Dame was never going to walk up there to the podium last week, hire Parker, and then say, yeah, we stepped all over ourselves and messed up on this one, and then we got this guy. That was never going to happen. You got to fill in the intellectual blanks on your own based on what happened. And it's clear to see mistakes were made. I don't need to know what they all are. But I need these people to get in a room and get on the same page to avoid them publicly. Okay. And then here's number five. I come back to this all the time. I'm going to keep coming back to it. Everybody involved in this operation outside of football. So that's Jack and Hire. Outside Parker, Freeman, their part. Whatever. Paulus, all that. They all need to remind themselves, look in the mirror and, and remind themselves why Notre Dame matters to the extent it does in the world and ask themselves why that is. And if you ask yourself that and you're honest with it, it's elite Notre Dame football success is what allowed all of the other things that have flourished at Notre Dame to become what they are, have the value they are, the impact they have, the reach they have. All of it, from what the degree is worth worldwide to charitable endeavors and, and all this stuff we do, 
everybody needs to understand why this stuff all matters. Elite football winning in Notre Dame is why. And it needs to be looked at and respected to that level forever. Forever. You have to be a healthy curator of what made this all what it is. And I need them to get back to that because it doesn't seem like that happens all the time and it rubs me the wrong way. When they act like they value book learning more than football, that's just not the way it goes. Book learning doesn't pay the bills the way football does, okay? So that that's what I have on this, you guys. Um, I just want to avoid whatever this was moving forward. We need to avoid it like the plague in, in whatever comes next. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. And I just wanted to go over, maybe this stuff's already happened. Maybe it hasn't, but I needed to, if it hasn't. So I needed to get that out. So hopefully Notre Dame's reviewing all this so we could get kind of on the same page here and whatever the issues were before avoid them moving forward. We, we really need to avoid another public black eye. Um, and then the next thing we're going to put out will be more about spring ball and that being kind of a rebirth and a clean slate in some ways practically on the field that Notre Dame's desperately got to be looking forward to um, just to get the taste out of everybody's mouth of the last couple of weeks. So then we'll talk about how spring could provide a practical springboard to kind of help alleviate some of the stress and pressure and negativity that's been surrounding us. So that'll be the next thing coming out. So, and then I'll be back from vacation and we'll get into some call-in shows. I want to give you guys a chance to hear what you think about everything that's been going on. So you don't just have to listen to me. So, all right, that'll be it. We'll see you guys soon with a, a spring update. Have a good one.